Hey everybody, welcome back. Thank you guys so much. I hope you missed us while we were gone on the uh, bye week. But this is episode 9 of the Arizona Bird Watchers. And with me as always... My name is Dave. Or on the tweeter, it is David Fitz 4 Yeah. I'm Troy. I think I said that. You did not say that. Well, Troy is my name. TD Row nice 1. Nice to meet you, Troy. Is my Twitter game. Nice to meet you, Dave. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, guys. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the bye week. I hope you got amped up for uh, next week's game against Seattle. For this week's fun facts, I want to talk about how the Cardinals got flexed to Sunday night uh, against the Bengals. So we're going to have two back-to-back -back Sunday night football games. Back-to-back -back Sunday night, the first time ever for the Cardinals, and the second time ever for any NFL franchise to be back-to-back -back on Sunday night football yeah, games. Yeah, man, since it moved to NBC, this is the second time in the history of it. So that's pretty exciting, and I think that just states, you know, how fun of a team we are and how much on the rise we are and i don't know i think arizona plays an exciting brand of football and i think you know it'll make two great shows for sunday night and they got two good games lined up for us right it does show how far this franchise has come a franchise that can play an ordinary half of football last week and then play a stellar half right after halftime yes so let's get into it. it it was an interesting game last week if you just judged it on the first half that's not the cardinals were that was kind of a nightmare first half once again, our field general, the man, Carson Palmer, he was 23 of 38, 374 yards, four touchdowns, and kind of an ugly interception. But, uh, you know, once again, I think that first drive, Carson came out and he dissected the offense. Then I don't know what happened for the rest of the first quarter and the second quarter. But in that third quarter, he came out and just put on a clinic against the other team, man. Right. And, I mean, so far this season, the guy's fourth in yards. Uh, he's got 2,386 yards. He's got a QB rating of 110, which is third only behind Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. I mean, stellar people to be in, in a class with. Uh, so, yes. congrats to Carson. Yeah, well, and it helps when you're throwing to studs, you know, like we got a Larry. Larry M. F. Fitzgerald. He had nine receptions, 84 yards, and a touchdown. So, you know, that was some pretty big stuff. Seen him continuously put up big numbers, being the highest thrown to receiver in our roster. Right. He uh, He's tied for first in receiving touchdowns this season. Uh, he's tied with Odell Beckham Jr. Odell Beckham got to seven, mind you, after he scored three in a game when uh. that last week when the Giants and the Saints had that blowout game against each other. That just goes to show you what a crazy season Larry Fitzgerald has had. It feels like he's back in 2006. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, dude. And then, you know, once again, every week we see him coming back, back stronger. And I think he came back big this time. And of course, you know, we can't go on talking about that game without welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, Michael Floyd, baby. Michael Floyd, welcome back. Just keep back so Troy doesn't have to sing you another welcome yeah. song again. <laughs> Four receptions, 106 yards, and a touchdown. And that 61-yarder, dude, was beautiful. He walked into the end zone after he shook off a receiver like he was a fly. If it wasn't for that injury that kept him out for the start of training camp and the start of the season, he might be leading this team in the big plays. Yeah, dude. And I think we're getting him healthy at the right time of the season. Second half, we're going to see him take off for the rest of the season. So I'm excited to watch what other kind of magic he's got in store for us. And another fun part of the game was we got to see our rookie in there jj nelson three receptions 70 yards and i think the the coolest thing about it was on that first drive he had a one-handed catch you know looking like jerry rice in the mid 80s just beautiful and he ran some great routes dude he was he was all over the field he looked really sharp and i was i was really proud of uh, to see him out there and making some big first steps absolutely troy and it'll be exciting to see him develop and how about cj2k yes. 30 carries 109 yards this season he's the first running back 400 yard rushing games in a season since Stump Mitchell. Stump Mitchell. Of 1985, who kind of ironically is our running backs coach now. It's just good to see us have a strong running back. We can't we say it every single week, man. CJ2K, keep your thing up, boy. You're you're killing it out there. He's killing it. He did have um, he would even say he had a rough game in a sense because he had two fumbles. Yeah, which is was big, you know what I mean? But I don't think those are mistakes he's going to keep up. Yeah, the last time he had a fumble was in the first half of last season. So this is not typical of CJ2K. No, not at all. And I want to say our defense actually did pretty well for the whole game there. Uh, we had a sack, 
an interception and three forced fumbles, and we recovered one of those. I think in the first half, they let Cleveland come up. They let them score big. And the biggest reason I noticed they did that, dude, is they were playing it so safe. They weren't bringing the blitz. They weren't bringing any pressure, and it showed, and Josh McCown went out there and did what he wanted to do. Right, but then we kind of cleared it up in the second half. Yeah. It was so weird because if you watch that first half, it was a stressful session. It was. It really was. We couldn't get anything going offensively. We had the fumbles. Larry Fitzgerald had the fumble at the end of the first half uh, on a what was a potentially scoring drive, really turned the momentum around there. And Right, and then Kevin Mentor had kind of a couple bonehead plays. Yeah, dude. One uh, late hit on Josh, uh, Josh McCown as he was sliding, which is unlike him, but he did deliver one of the hits of the game. Yes, dude. That did kind of shake up McCown yep. to where he was hurt the rest of the game. And then uh, Manziel ended up starting, you know, the following game yeah. because of McCown's injury. Money so. Manziel, dude. It was kind of exciting to watch him play honestly I really I liked uh I don't know if I'm on the train or not but it was cool to see him out there and Cleveland's got to roll with that dude man they, what yeah. else can they do he's got some potential but mentor our guy with potential yeah he led the team in tackles with seven tackles and game. I think I think this game you know it's kind of ironic that we we stepped up in the second half right. being that this was the game that's going to lead us into the second half of the season but up bah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Stay for the puns, folks. Yep. Uh, yeah, and I think that this second half of the season is where we're going to see who we really are. That's really what's going to happen. So, overall, it was a good game. We came back from a poor first half, and we got to win like this. I think the biggest thing to take away is we just can't have those kind of halves for going to the second half of our season. The second half of our season is going to be the toughest part, like hands down. It is coming into the nitty-gritty of our season. Yes. So, let's talk about who, uh, who could use some improvement, who could use those up downs this week. Troy, who do you think needs up downs? I think from that Browns game, up downs got to go to Bobby Massey. Uh, he was getting worked by Paul Kruger this whole game. Kruger's not, he's a beast, don't get me wrong, but we got some really big defenses we're coming up against, and Bob Massey's got to be able to handle those kind of guys, especially on Palmer's right side where Floyd and Smokey, all those guys lining up on the right a lot. Right, Seattle's known for their defense. The Bengals are coming in undefeated. Yeah. The, this is a big part of it, so Massey, get your crap together, man. I believe. And, uh, yeah, no, we'll, he'll strengthen his part of the line. Yeah, 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 and, he'll get uh, it together. Good bye week, everyone got to rest up, feel better, yeah. and he's been good this so far this season i think this was a good gut check kind of game for him you know absolutely and we have to give the game ball or maybe a couple balls a pair of balls to my notre dame boys yeah uh, troy nicholas and mike floyd troy nicholas man he only had two catches of the day but hey they were touchdowns. Both for touchdowns. Both for touchdowns. He ended our first drive with a wide open catch. And then the second one, he was pretty wide open too. So, yeah. so good play calling. And it was it was good to see him uh, have a big game with a couple touchdowns. You know, and I know he's kind of prone to injury, but hopefully we don't see that side of him uh, when yes. he's in a red jersey. I'm, so. Yeah, I'm glad to see him out there. I'm glad to see him playing big, you know. And uh, I also, I would like to just refer to him from now on as uh, Babyface Nicholas. Oh, Babyface. Yeah, because have you? Like he looks like twelve in like this like yeah. Hulk body. You know Do you what think I mean? he still gets ID'd? Oh, definitely. Oh gosh, definitely. Uh, so the other, yeah, the other game ball, Mike Floyd, very well deserves. I mean, what can you say, dude? He had just this most beautiful one-handed grab touchdown. Uh, in the second half, but got taken away by offsetting penalties. But if he had caught that ball, it would have been on the highlight. It would have definitely made SC top 10, dude. It was just a sensational catch. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's just good to see him get back in the lineup, dude, and showing off all these things. that That's what made him the first-round pick. That's why he was supposed to you know, come in and take Fitz's job someday. And I think this season, you know, this is a make-or-break season for him, dude. He's in his last year of his rookie contract. You know, he's got to show us something to get an extension, or we're going to let him go. And I think... He's killing it. I think he's doing exactly what we need him to do, and I, I don't want to see him go. I, I love Floyd, and I, I want to see him continue to prosper. Right, continue to develop and make our coach proud. Yes. And speaking about our coach, Bruce Arians, uh, let's jump into Arianisms this week where we break down Bruce's best quote of the week. Yes. And so when he was talking about the game, Troy, what was he saying? Well, I think a great one from Coach again this week is uh, this was his uh, lo his locker room speech after the Bronc after the Browns game. There's always great locker room speeches, I guess. But so in this one, he said, "It's obvious, man. Pretenders in the first half, damn sure contenders in the second half. All right, we need to put 60 minutes like that together from here on in. All right, that's what we're capable of. Nothing else is acceptable. Break them down." 
there we go break them down yes what a quote I, and that's absolutely true yep. i mean it was worrisome in the first half and especially against the browns you know what i mean like that right. was what was scary that it was going up against the browns and we can't have halves like that when we go when we come up against cincy even seattle yep. they may be four and four they're still a good team we can't let the and we're going into the 12s you know we're going to S seattle we can't have a first half like that but i think after the once again i can't reiterate our bye week came at the best time of the season man right Right, because eight quarters of contending play is yeah. what we need Yes, uh, these next two weeks. And I know after that win this week, I know the cards took to the social medias. Yes. And I don't want to say bragged, but they vented their frustrations over the first half yes. or their struggles or whatever. So what are on bird chirps? Bird this chirps week? this week. Well, after the game, Chris Johnson, just one of the reasons why he's just, we love this guy. He's such a fit for the Cardinals, man, is... Uh, Hey, that ain't me. Sorry to my savages. Got to do better. So Chris Johnson acknowledging he made some mistakes. He knows he's better than that, and I think we'll see a better version of right, him. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, then we got our – I think he's like – Tim and Tony Jefferson got to be tied for some of my favorite social media Cardinals. But Mike Leach tweeted a photo of himself with the Cardinals' former punter, Dave Zasadil, and a caption it, Who are you calling old? Your makeup looks good, though, because <laughs> old Zasty is pretty old, dude. He's right oh, up there. Oh, he's, is he? And he's a commentator. He's a, he's a radio commentator for Cleveland Browns Sports Radio. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. And then we had Rashad Johnson posting a photo on Instagram. Yes. His secondary. Uh, and it said, it's a blessing to play with the most selfless, passionate, humble savages of all time. Hashtag truest savages savages man i yeah. love that phrase yeah i like that savages it just phrase. sounds they're so riding with that hungry yeah man and they are hungry yes they are yeah dude and speaking of savages tony jefferson in in his fashion very funny tweeted out y'all do me a favor and make sure these two don't miss the 2016 pro bowl they deserve it and he you know he tagged tyron matthew and rashad johnson so, you know, get out there. So, just you know, just a reminder, guys, our Pro Bowl ballots are up. You can go on NFL.com, vote for all the Cardinals and all the different categories we have. Right. Get our guys in the Pro Bowl, man. Let's see them in Hawaii. Yeah, let's see them. Is it back in Hawaii this year? I think it's back in – I'm pretty sure it's back in Hawaii this year. Yeah, all man. Right. And, and uh, you know what? Actually, <laughs> to be honest, I'd rather see them get picked for the Pro Bowl and then not be allowed to play in the Pro Bowl. Yes. Because yes. if you're in the Super Bowl – I'd love to see them reject this invitation. Yeah, I'd be like, nah, I got some, I got some that that, that we. I got something better to do. Yeah, I'd like to see them say they got something better to do. Honestly, speaking of guys who got something better to do, let's dive right into our under the nest. And this week, instead of uh, going into a new player, we're gonna actually review a player we've already done. Uh, and I want to talk this week about Marcus Golden, our outside linebacker. Last game against Cleveland, he had a tackle and a QB hit. It wasn't for a sack, but he still hit the QB. I mean, the guy just seems to be creating pressure. And there was a few times in the Cleveland game where he just seemed like he was like a foot away from a couple sacks. And he just seems to be playing so ahead of his time. He's, he's integrated great into the defense. He stepped up in a nice, I mean, you know, he's no Alex Okafor, but he's still stepping up and learning and he's playing, you know, in a way that's going to be a solid staple for our defense coming up. Right, and he's got that hunger, and he's fitting into that savage personality. He is very savage, yes. Yes, he is very savage. Yeah, dude, I heard a couple of interviews where the coaches were talking about him, and they say that, like, Marcus Golden already seems like a four-year veteran. He's playing that wow. far ahead of himself. Wow, wow, wow. Well, maybe Okafor's absence might come out as a positive. Yeah, no, given, definitely. Given Golden the start. Good news, though, we will have Okafor back this week. Against Seattle, so good. we got a few guys coming back off injury. I think they said Darren Fells will be coming back off injuries. Oh, good. So we got a guys, a bunch of guys rested up. John Smokey Brown was working on some hamstring issues, so hopefully he got that worked out in right. the bye week. Those are the kind of injuries, dude, that I'm so glad we get to shake and come back for the second part of our season full strength. Right, right. And this is going to be a big game against the Seahawks. Yes. I mean, both teams are coming off a bye. Always a big game with the Seahawks, man. Yeah, they're the second-ranked defense in the NFL, so it's going to be a tough challenge for our, our offense. Yes. You know, they have, uh, they have three picks on the year, 20 sacks. Which, you know, they don't have very many interceptions, which is kind of weird because, you know, Seahawks always have that legendary Legion of Boom. Legion of Boom. You know, we and have uh, we have we have our savages. They have their Legion of Boom. Right, right, right. But uh, the Legion of Boom has not been making much. Sound. Yeah, yeah. They've been more like, you know, I don't know. Legion of, of mildly annoying rumble. Right, right, right. <laughs> Legion of clatter. Yes, that's what. Yeah. Much better wording. Yes. Uh, 
Yeah, dude. So it's you know it's really cool to see us be putting up those numbers like that. But it's so strange to see Seattle, you know, be such a middle of the you know middle of the road kind of defense as far as takeaways go. You know, and Seattle's middle of the road everything this season. You know, it's kind of weird when right. When, and, yeah, and they had a middle of the road offense, or you know, their defense led them to the playoffs, two Super Bowls. Yes. Well, their defense and Marshawn Lynch, and their defense and Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. And Marshawn hasn't even been putting up great numbers. I mean, beast mode has been a not so scary beast <laughs> yeah. mode. I mean, three hundred and seventy five yards with three point six yards a carry. Yes. At this point of the season, is mild. Is is yeah average. I mean, Chris Johnson, you know, surpassed that, and everybody thought Chris Johnson was a write off guy and right Marshawn Lynch supposed to be an elite bay maybe all those years of you know being the number one toad is finally catching up to him they do have a kind of a scary rookie though uh Thomas Rawls uh he has 376 yards yeah just as many yards as Lynch and he's only played in I think three or four games yeah averaging 5.4 yards a carry where Lynch is only 3.6 so you can see that people are prepared for him this guy could be a, a threat yes and they do have some other threats even though they haven't really utilized him, you know, they get, they picked up this great, picked up Jimmy Graham in the offseason, which everybody thought would be a game changer for their offense. Uh, but they ended up giving up Max Unger, so one of their best offensive linemen, to get Jimmy Graham in. He really hasn't done that much yeah. this season. 38 yards, 40, 38 receptions, 45 yards. I mean, I love it. I love seeing a great player like Jimmy Graham go to the Seahawks and just watch his career fizzle in front of him. Right, and uh, their true wide receiver, Doug Baldwin, he yeah. gets targeted 31 receptions, 345 yards there. So, you know, not not really scary. You know, and, and their field general, Russell Wilson, he's got a 95 QB rating, and, and he's only completing 68% of his passes. So, uh, I mean, that's decent. Yeah, you know, and Russell Wilson, I think it's going to be exciting to see us play him now, especially that we've got our secondary and such a good thing, because what makes Russell Wilson so has made him so successful through the years is that cornerbacks can't cover wide receivers in the NFL for eight seconds while Russell Wilson scrambles from, fifty, you know, a sideline yep. to sideline making plays, you know, and I think with all the speed we can, we're able to put on the field right now, it'll be really exciting to see how we can keep him contained. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, and I still think... I think Tyron, I think Honey Badger is yeah. a safety that can make plays when the play breaks up. Oh yeah, that's that's a specialty. He's like he's one of the best open field tacklers we have on the team. Open dude. field tacklers, yeah, and he can jump hard a pick hitter he can... when people are running out of the pocket. I just think our secondary especially matches up very well against the Seattle depleted yeah, offensive we scheme. They completely they've got going. agree. Yeah, dude, and Seattle's they're four and four this season, you know, and. Two and one at home, and like their two home wins are against the Bears and the Lions, you know. So wow. teams they should beat. And that Lions game was ten to thirteen, and we all know the controversy around that game. You know, what I mean? it wasn't even right. like a defining win against them. Right, right. And the Lions, we've seen how terrible they are. And the twelfth man, they had such a huge advantage at home, and yeah. they're not getting that. It's exciting. I mean, as much as I love the NFC West being the best division in the NFL, which maybe this season it isn't quite the same. True. It is really, really great. I'm gonna love to go into Seattle and give him peace. Give him peace of our mind. Let Carson go back there. And the last time Carson played in Seattle, we won. Right. And that was the first time they've been beaten at home in two seasons. In two seasons. So uh, so coming in there this week to CenturyLink Field in Seattle, it's this Sunday night on NBC. What yes. do you think, Troy? What What's your prediction? Uh, I predict, I do still predict to be a close game just because of who these two teams are when they get and in together. And where it's at. Yeah. I'm going to say 28-27. 28-27. Calling a nail biter. One point game. Yeah, Ooh. I'm feeling it. Oh, I don't like you, Troy. <laughs> You're a bird watcher. You got to be a little bit biased, man. Um, I'm going to say, uh, I for some reason think we're just going to put on points. I think we're going to put up 35 points. Oh, nice. Okay. 35-24. Okay. All right. I dig that. Yeah, yeah. that's a good. that's a good one, man. Um, hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in again. We're so glad to be back with you guys after the bye week and uh, we're excited to shout out for the Cardinals. Go ahead and remember to uh, subscribe to Trollboat on YouTube. And uh, if you're listening to our podcast or you have something to say to us or you know any questions or anything, you can reach us if you just hashtag AZ Bird Watchers. You can reach us on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, everything. We've everything. gotten so much support on there already. Yes, and we just yes. appreciate that. And if you have any more questions or comments, feel free to throw it up on the YouTube page or yes, Reddit guys. or wherever you find us. Uh, we'll, we'll find you as well. Yes. And hey, remember, 
Go Cardinals. Go Cardinals.